like everybody says, you get that first championship and backing it up is always the next step and a harder step. And um, I learned a lot last year. I made some big mistakes. I learned from them. I didn't win as many races as the year before, but that one was way sweeter. We've all done this for a long time together now. We've all grown up together, racing each other. Every year it gets tougher and tougher to, to win races. For me, being a dad, it, it just, it happens and it's such a progression, even from when he was six years old winning motorcycle races, you know, like his first one he won, motocross stuff. It becomes, and you gotta watch it be, because it becomes the norm. What's next for Jake? I think uh, he'll uh, probably be here. I think his aspirations are to stay in the US. The, you know, we've, he's done the European tour two or three times and I think he's happy at home. My dad's been there and believed in me more than more than anybody in my life, more than myself for sure at times. And uh, just the freaking ultimate dad, you know, to, to stick through it and to and to be level headed and supportive and just always kind of my biggest uh, my biggest friend and my biggest teacher in, in this game. And he's made a lot of sacrifices. My whole family's made a lot of sacrifices to be where I'm at, where I'm at now. And so to have him it was cool to have him at Texas. Obviously, I'm sure he was bummed he wasn't at Pittsburgh, but. <laughs> like I always say, man, I'm just so lucky to have this team be able to ride this Yamaha R1. I hope they want to hire me again. Previously on Pressure to Rise. Here we go, the number one plate of Jake Gagne has a look over his shoulder, onto the front straightaway, he'll go. The checkered flag waves, he does the hat trick and wraps up the national championship with this third place finish from Josh Heron. The biggest priority of the year, the biggest gift of the year is to wrap up the championship for Yamaha. So pretty unreal to do, to do it again and uh, yeah, just uh, excited to go in the last couple rounds with that weight off the back and just go do some good old racing with the boys. And um, again, yeah, kind of a kind of a wild day. It's a culmination of all the hard work that everybody does. When we were heading into this race weekend, did you expect to have the championship wrapped up by the time we left here? Not at all, not at all. Um, I didn't hear anything about it. The team didn't talk about it. I didn't think about it. We just wanted to try to get some wins. And I saw it on the pit board on the way by, and I figured, uh, wow, yeah, I'm kind of speechless. It's just something I didn't expect leaving the track today. I'll take luck when I can get it. It just sucks to see Bobier go out like that. Feels good to come back with the crew. A bit surprised. We never told you, because we didn't want to tell you. I, know. you didn't I, didn't, know. I thought it would take like a DNF. I didn't look and uh, yeah you never want to look just win races right yeah that's amazing man jake had a lot of pressure this year even though he won the title pretty early but i think the big thing for him this year was when he had pressure and when let's say he didn't have the win he didn't let his ego get in the way and crash the bike because i have to win if he was second place, that's all he could do. He took the points. Well, I think, you know, the guys that didn't win the title are just probably thinking about where they can improve. You know, they got to go into this off season and see, uh, improve where they improved last year, but also see where their weak areas are and uh, work on that this off season, whether it's their riding or their bike. So you just got to see where you're weak and uh, where you're giving up the most 
and just work on it. From Austin, Texas, we're at Circuit of the Americas and the sun is shining and it is 100 degrees as we set the stage for Medallia Superbike race number one. The intense heat prompted race control to trim the lap count to 12 for race one. What a front row we have. We have a Yamaha, a Ducati, a Suzuki, parody in Medallia Superbike, incredible. on the siding lap. Yeah. So just make sure you're not first back. Try to keep, yes. keep it cool, because if you have to sit, it's going to go. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Get your first gear before you stop, just to be sure, yeah? And just what you did, just take your time getting here, yeah? Remember, the half of these guys are not as fit as you are. Okay. Just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. You got this, just keep your head down. And we're going. Looked like Heron got a really good launch on the Ducati initially, but there goes Jake Gagne. He's got a half a bike length. Heron's got position at JD Beach on the 95, trying to go up the inside. But it is going to be Gagne who sweeps around the outside. But Josh Heron will lead the way for the moment as they go down the hill. Did you see how Gagne led off there a little bit on the inside? There's a big rolling bump there, Greg, that will literally move your bike over four feet. So he did a smart thing. Gagne has obviously knew that and uh, let off as they went down into turn number two. Now they're rolling through these S's. It was a great start from J.D. Beach, who got pinched off just a little bit there up in that tricky turn one. As Heron and Gagne fight to set the pace, Escalante stays close and doesn't let them get away. Are we pulling away from Westby, did you say? Hopefully these three can just stay and just keep going. Heron comes right back in the draft. He's got position up the inside because the next corner they go to is a left-hander, and Heron retakes the lead as it's all fight for the Californian. And when you watch that, you see Heron even gave Jake a little bit of room there to do something on the outside, and Gagne was able to turn that bike back up underneath him on the exit of that corner. So Gagne now leads through this little stadium section for the first time. Escalante able to go with both of them at the moment. That's gonna be a hell of a race. Early in lap two, Escalante tries to move forward. Escalante now takes a stab and guts up underneath Heron before turn eight. Heron turns it back though, gets underneath him. This is the slowest one of the S's and then you accelerate into a blind fast. They're gonna short shift here up to fourth gear over the top brow of that hill, Greg. And it's really bumpy down through there as well as Escalante has another look to try to come up the inside of Josh Heron. Uh, in the beginning, I, I feel really, really strong. Uh, when I try to pass uh, Herring and then Herring pass me again, I say, okay, I, 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 I lost a little bit time and then, okay, I try again. It's, this is racing, it's part of racing. I know Herring is super fast in the beginning and also an aggressive rider. Escalante tries to pass in the same corner again and this time gets it to stick. When I have a clean track, I say, okay, I need to maintain my pace. I feel very strong. While Escalante overtook Heron, J.D. Beach passes Skulls for fifth. J.D. Beach is the man on the move in this group, though. The 95, the dirt tracker who finished his last uh, race of the season last weekend, has put himself in a spot there, uh, Greg, up to sixth place, fifth place. And he's the fastest of the riders that you see directly in front of him at the moment. A 209.9 that time from Richie Escalante, a 209.5 from JD Beach. And the only other guy in the 209s that lap was that of Jake Gagne leading the race. He's right on the guys in front of him. On lap five, Brandon Posh makes a costly mistake and crashes out of seventh. That is an unusual miscue for the 96. I haven't seen it all year. Nope. And so, unfortunate for him, he's gonna try to pick that bike up and keep going, if the bike is rideable. I feel like a lot of people already forget that it's only been like five and a half months since I broke my back. 
I'm still like trying to loosen some of those muscles up and they like don't work anymore. It's weird. Like even hanging off the bike, I can't like move like that anymore, really. So I'm like just trying to get back to normal in the off season. Just lost front. Don't spot the hay scratch. So Jake Gagne still leads Richie Escalante by 4.2 seconds. On the next lap, Heron runs wide and Jacobson takes advantage. Just struggling either with front tire or brake issues for Heron to get that bike slowed down and a big advantage for Escalante. Greg, it is so hot and it is so easy. Um, even even if, as fit as these guys are, it's so easy to make a small error of judgment getting down in there. He's on Heron. Each one of these motorcycles has been struggling to keep the temperature down below the boiling point. So now, across the stripe, it's Gagne with a 4.2 second lead over Escalante. And of course, the 99 PJ Jacobson goes into third spot. And taking over fourth into turn number one is going to be JD Beach. For me, I, I thrive off of putting myself through the worst thing I can. And just, and when I get done with the day, if I feel like absolutely crap just because it's been so hot and I've rode so much, that's a good day. So for me to come race like this, it's this is what I strive for. And this is what I love to just put myself through the worst possible thing I can. So I don't, it's kind of weird, but I just that's what makes me tick. With five laps to go, Heron is black flagged as it looks like the heat is too much for the Ducati. So for Josh Heron, he can feel the power loss, I'm sure. See the temperatures on the dashboard probably flashing at him as well. Ugh. It doesn't look like there's any oil spilling on the track, Jay, yeah, but, but it, it's leaking somewhere. Something like that never gets better. It's hard enough to be riding these bikes for as many laps as we're riding them on a track that's this physical. But then when you add, you know, pretty much 20 degrees, 25 degrees warmer than any other race we've had all year, it's it's uh, makes it a lot more difficult and it's straight torture on the bike. So it's uh, and then when you don't go do good, you know, on top of all that, it makes it more difficult. With three laps to go, J.D. Beach is still moving forward. J.D. Beach, who's now gotten oh, around yeah, P.J. Jacobson. Yeah, I mean, J.D. just went down the inside, almost like he just got a better drive Yeah. out of the tight left-hander, and he's able to keep that pace. I'm burning up, but I love it, and it's so much fun. Escalante is looking strong, but Beach is putting the pressure on. You can definitely see 95 is not done with this yet. Just in the last two splits, he's gained almost half a second. And the last maybe four laps, no grip, like done. So it's less energy, more difficult to control the bike, and JD clubs the gap every lap, every lap. This is where Richie's gonna have to be absolutely perfect. As you can see that bike starting to tie itself up a little bit now. He's gonna have to be perfect through this long right-hand section because J.D. Beach had the rear tire lit up on the exit of this one a lap ago. It's been a long time since Escalante has been on a Moto America podium and the team lets loose. Come on, Richie! Hey, 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 hey. Final corner onto the front straightaway we go. Gagne's already there. Come on, Reggie! And to the line they come. JD Beach wheel in the air. A podium finish, and he's happy, but Richie Escalante and his oh! team over the moon. <laughs> yeah! Oh! <laughs> My first super bike podium is amazing. I, I feel super good, super happy. Uh, proud of my team, Vision William for Extra Suzuki. Uh, it's working, working hard, especially my crew, pushing so hard with me. And, uh, never give up, just keep going, keep going, keep pushing, and yeah. Finally, podium, and now I want more. I tell you, it's like probably one of the nervous races I've watched, to be honest, because it's always special, uh, you know, a first podium in a super bike for any rider, you know? And, uh, and Richie's been putting in a big effort. He, you know, personally, obviously, I think he deserves it, no doubt. And a lot of people do, there's a lot of people on Richie's side. 
I was making a lot of noise you might have heard, but uh, I was pretty pretty happy. Pretty, yeah, it was great. You know, it's it's al- it's almost as good as riding the bike, honestly. Or you watch your boys do do that, like watching Richie achieve the, his goal. The whole team's invested in it. And, you know, you know, the whole team needed it. Richie needed it. It was just, yeah, man, it's, it's it was good. I knew this race was going to be hard, and for me to still going forward at the end of the race when we're all dying, I mean, because it, it doesn't matter how hard you train, how fit you are, I mean, we're all out there, we're feeling it, I mean, it's hot, it, the, the track's slick, so to be able to still be going forward at the end felt really good, and now I know if I can kind of cl- clean up the first few, few laps, uh, maybe if Jake makes a mistake, I can fight him for the win, but he's, I mean, he's riding phenomenal. So it's going to be hard, but uh, I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Gagne gets the win, and J.D. Beach gets his first podium in Superbike since 2019. Jacobson in fourth, and Skoltz rounds out the top five. It's been right there, you know, when you haven't been able to seal the deal, and, and he did it. You know, probably one of the best racetracks in America, no doubt. And JD, of course, is just coming in, and he been, hasn't been on the bike for a while. So, you know, the dude still has it, and uh, man, you know, don't count him out. Oh, we got double film crews right now. Yeah, right. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Wait, wait. <laughs> Can you do it again tomorrow? Yeah, you too. Well done. You yeah. Race weekends aren't only for racing. It brings together close friends off the track to recharge, reminisce, and ease the stress of the sport they all love. I'm like the booking guy, so I try to get some Airbnbs, and when we split it with a couple people, it ends up being, you know, cheaper than hotels. And the best part is, you know, we can make dinner and make breakfast and hang and. After doing that for a while, like hotels, I just hate hotels. Like I'd rather have like a little a little place and it works out good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake, he coordinates all of our travel and accommodation. Um, yeah, he finds some pretty cool Airbnb, so so we leave that up to him and, and uh, yeah, he always seems to to knock it out of the park. Dude, that's huge. I wouldn't jump over it. That was one. huge. <laughs> Dude, kids these days, huh? We stayed in some pretty cool ones, but uh, I think it was the Ridge. We had a house in the basement, had a had a little putting green in there and a uh, foosball table and ping pong table. So, you know, Sunday after the race, we Maddie and, and some of the guys came over and it was a good time. So uh, I think that's been my favorite so far. Oh my, did you see that move around the outside yeah, of Coop? Yeah, nice. See, that's weird. Like, how do you how do you think you're gonna dial that in to be the same? Watch, he's still gonna come out in the lead. Oh no! It was really close though. Campy, one of the first guys he met, I think, was me when he came over to the states, and like about eight years ago. We were just talking about that last night. It's, he's been there that here that long, and uh, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of crazy to see the progression and where we're at now as we're getting older. Surprised nobody took that other line since it was faster. It's always nice to have close friends around you, and, you know, especially in a sport like this that it, it's so dangerous and and there's a lot on the line. And um, you know, even just growing up in, in the motorsports industry, it's it's a really tight family, you know. So you, you do tend to create some some long term relationships. Yeah, if you're listening to this, Tom, <laughs> I want to ride for your team for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. I've always had the notion that, you know, you're at the track, have fun. You know, it's such a, a, a small part of your, so the, the whole racing career, such a, a short time of your life, you know, and these are the best days. Sorry about your day, my dude. Yeah, wasn't a very... Tomorrow's a new day. All here racing, all riding as fast as we can on the highest level of the national circuit. Did you get that? <laughs> all of it. I guess I just get along with the South Africans for whatever reason. With Skultz, man, we met each other when we were 14 in Europe in Ricky's Cup, you know, so we've known each other a long time. 
Myself, Cameron Peterson and Gagne, we've been friends from racing the South African Championship. I rode with Gagne in the Red Bull Rookies Cup, you know, so we, we kind of grew up racing to, together. You know, they're just awesome guys. You know, whether they beat me or I beat them, which, you know, Gagne does, does the beating most of the time, to be honest. But, you know, I think everyone's pretty happy. You know, if we're going to lose to someone, it would rather be to our friends. <gasps> We're showing over, dog. For Ferrandis, Ferrandis doesn't have, have a ride. So if Masterpool doesn't have a ride, Ferrandis doesn't have a ride. When the helmet's on, everyone wants to win, but off a track, it's always nice to just talk to your friends and kind of go over what you felt, how your bike's feeling, and you know we're all riding R1 Yamahas, so it's 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 also awesome to just kind of go over what they're thinking about the bike, how their bike's reacting in certain areas. You know, it's always cool to see the, be, be a part of the house of your friends. Now that we're older, we're able to separate the stuff from the track, from away, away from the track. And it's always nice to just go back to Airbnb and kind of shoot the with the boys and, and you know, eat some good food and, and uh, kind of take our mind off of, off of the racing and, and just get away for a little bit. I always say it, but you know, I'm here to do a job and to race motorcycles and do the best I can, but like, it really makes a difference being able to enjoy the weekends with with people that you know the team and my friends and uh it's you know like i want to have a good time i want to enjoy this while i got it so the temperature will be slightly lower for sunday but not enough to make it any more comfortable just thankful that we've got garages here you know that makes a huge difference i feel bad for the some of the teams who don't have them you know because it makes a huge difference it definitely wears down everyone everyone's a little bit more edgy for sure so normally if everything goes well for us, we've just been like, park the bike, let's come back tomorrow morning when it's cooler and make our adjustments in the morning. The heat caused most of the DNFs in race one as seven bikes didn't finish the race and four didn't even make the grid. We saw a lot of failures with a lot of bikes, a lot of bikes. It wasn't just a Yamaha or a Ducati, but it was across the board, BMW and everything else. So yeah, the heat makes a pretty big difference. You just have to keep the bike moving. And when the guys come down pit lane, they just gotta shut it off right away and start cooling it off because it gets a pretty big heat soak. You'll see the BM, the Ducati guys with their leaf blowers blowing on the thing everywhere, yeah, trying to keep it cool. It's more than that, the pressures in the tires go up too, in the front tire especially. So when you're drafting, I, mean, you, I know you hear about MotoGP, but we see it in our data. Actually, the front tire gets, it gets harder, it gets you know, bigger with the air, and, and the uh, oil temperature for sure goes up, or the water temperature goes up by a good amount when you're behind a lot of guys who really want to kind of get out and be by yourself. Medallia Superbike race number two is coming up and it should be a barn burner because the sun is shining, the heat is up, the track temperature is up and these riders get to contest with this fantastic circuit. You see those lights go on, reds go up. Just like that, we're away racing. Front wheel in the air for Richie Escalante. Not the start he wanted, but Josh Heron, he gets a good one. But it looks like a pair of Yamahas are gonna go around the outside. J.D. Beach had a notion, but he will slide himself into third and Heron's having none of Jake Gagne. Gagne has to let off just a little bit. When you go down the inside of turn two, there's a big roller down there and it just upsets the chassis that much. Gagne couldn't really push the fact as they got to the bottom and Heron knows that, Heron's ridden on that part of the track, but you can see Gagne already all over the back and a much, much better start for the 95 of JD Beach. You got PJ Jacobson behind him and it looks like, I, I, I can't tell, I think oh, it's- JD's oh, down. JD's oh. down. We're done. All right, nine five down turn eight, rider up, attention to continue. He asked a little bit too much from the front tire and he tucks the front and that's an easy, physically, it's an easy crash. Well, that was a good run. Was he out a little wide or something? Shortly after Beach's crash, Hayden Gillum's engine blows and spills oil on the track. Big motor explosion. Hayden Gillum, you can see the oil all over his boots too. I mean, look at the oil all over his right boot. So there's probably gonna be a lot of fluid on the track down that back straightaway. So uh, I'm sure, again, Race Direction's gonna look at this. Oh, it's you can see burning. it's probably burning him pretty bad right now. He's gotta just get that boot off. Bike's on fire as well. And that's gonna set the grass on fire. So you can see that thing getting ready to spark up there, Greg. 
Yeah, they got to get him away from that motorcycle as it is burning up his skin. That is massively unfortunate for the Disrupt Racing team. When you get a motor explode like that and put oil all over, and some of that oil can't find its way into your boot, depending on where it came out the side of the motorcycle. Red flag. Red flag. Let's put it back together. Hey, you guys, spin the wheels before you put the warmers on to make sure they're round, and then uh, wrap them up. Check the tire for cuts. Where the heck's he at? There he comes, right handlebar maybe. Hey, if there's a crew that you want to bring oh, a bike yeah. back to that's got minimal damage that needs to get a turnaround pretty quickly, this is the crew you want to do it with. Marshall, get ready to zero the right sensor. Throttle sensor. It's all good, you all right? Yell out what you need. I got a throttle here for you. Wrap them up. Look, pick it up and look through it. Make sure it doesn't have like circles. It's fine. If it holds gas, it's good. What's over there? Just ask me. Yeah. Like. You want it? Take it. Up to you. I, I, I can't tell what's water and what's oil. oil. He was on the side of the track trying to take his boot off, and now they're taking him to medical. Oh. So it was Hayden who blew up? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Josh. The extensive track cleanup gives the attack crew the time they need. Ready to check the uh, throttle, Marshall, we're ready? Ready? As soon as it gets a snug, I'll do a zero and a hundred. I got it. You have the handlebar checker? Yeah, bottom door. I got it. Five minutes. Five minutes to get late opening. Five minutes. We got time. Take your time. Five minutes is a long time. Looks good to me. Two lap race. Original grid. Quick start. Is it 100? Is it 100? Is that zero? All good. Sorry. No, that's all right. It's all good. You're trying. You do the same <laughs> just don't fall down. <laughs> good start. Yeah. Do the exact same thing, except the fall down part. second adjustment causes Beach to miss the pit exit time window for the sighting lap, so he must start from the back of the grid for race two. Well, it should be fun to see him go forward. Clear in the rear. Lights are on, revs are up. We're away racing. Josh Heron got off the line perfectly. He did, and I think Gagne is going to kind of tip in here on him. As you can see, Heron's going to get the start. Gagne's going to just be to the outside of him and slot himself in there. Everybody looks like they're going to get through that turn one nice and clean. Heron opens up the entry to two, and Gagne's right behind him, unlike the first start. Is it Escalante, I believe, in third? Yes, TJ it is. fourth, and Brandon Posh right now is your top five. So Brandon Posh coming off of an incident yesterday, flying the flag up front for the moment for the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki team. If J.D. Beach is on the move early on. Well, he's got no pressure to get on the box now. I figure he'd be like P8, P10 by the time he comes around. He's got a little work to do. Most of these riders in the top three rows, Jason, are on the Dunlop R7, R5. Oh, oh and no, Matthew, Matthew Skulls. It looks like there's two riders involved, though. All right, two riders here on turn 19. J.D. was right there as well. One rider up, one rider still down. Matthew's laying on the track there. JD's running over to him. I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised if we see our second red flag unless Matthew starts getting up here pretty quickly. I oh, think JD clipped him. Yeah. I think JD clipped him. Nine, five, 
five and one one. Both riders are up. Riders are up. Riders are up. He's okay. Riders are up. Now, unfortunately, going into I, mean, I think it's corner 13 or something like that. Um, JD tried to try to pass me, and you know, unfortunately, locked up the, the front tire and took me out. That's all right. Don't worry about it. You can't you can't fix it and get out in the 10 la eight lap race. It's just not worth it. I guess it's just one of those racing deals. You know, he, he didn't mean to do it. Kind of sucked that it happened, and you know, both of us ended up with some zeros. It's okay, you're all right. Yeah. Is he all right? Yeah, he's good. Did you just quit, get sucked in there a bit? No, I got, he, he spun up coming out of the right. Ah. So I went to go, when I went inside, I got the, on the brakes with a bump and it just picked the rear up and I couldn't get it yeah, yeah. down. It's all right, it's I'm all sorry. right. You're good. Escalante is holding on to Heron and Gagne, looking for another podium, or better yet, the win. The number one plate of Gagne and number 54 of Richie Escalante choose to take their traditional oh, line at Escalante. Oh, on the vision the wheel, front. M4 X-Star Suzuki just loses the front end of the motorcycle, and down he goes. Yeah, that's a shame. I mean, we knew he was pushing, as you would, and uh, he's trying to get that bike, see if it's okay for him to get going again, see if he can get it back started. Come on, come on, start it up, come on. I'm not going to start it. Final quarter here at Circuit of the Americas for Josh Heron. Wheel in the air, checker flag out, and Heron takes the win in race number two. Heron pulls a gap on Gagne and gets his second win of the season. Jacobson third, then Fong, Posh, and Yates with his best finish of the season. Three different manufacturers graced the podium for race two. Josh Heron led the whole race and beats Gagne in a straight up fight, notching his 10th career victory in the superbike class. I still wasn't sure like how I was gonna react to the heat. I just kind of tried to suck it up, but going into the race, I was just so nervous about it that I, I honestly was thinking like there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this race because I was getting so hot all weekend. That's all I could think about. I was trying to block it out, but I, I couldn't. That's all. I, so it was very negative going into the starts of each race. But what's weird is like if you look back at least to 2018, like a lot of the wins that I have is like when I just didn't even want to go race. Like it's so weird. Like it takes something out of me mentally that I would be thinking about. It makes me concentrate so much on the negative that I somehow ride better. <laughs> so it's, I'm not thinking so much about my ride and it's, I'm, now all my concentration is on something maybe bad, but it helps me for some reason. PJ Jacobson lost some ground in his battle with Heron for second in the championship. He's now 28 points behind in third. Going into uh, like the race was, uh, was pretty brutal out there. It was like uh, so hot, I think. It's like worst temperatures I think I've ever raced in besides like Malaysia and Thailand when I used to be in the World Championship. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really, really difficult out there. And then also we had a restart as well. So that kind of like uh, made a lot of things happen differently physically. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was a struggle out there. And then especially, you know, like when the tires are going off and you're fighting your bike, like the, the last half of the race, while it's so hot, it's, uh, it gets pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I thought it would be a little bit different just because uh, the BMW power is, is so strong on the straightaways, but it was uh, it was kind of a difficult weekend for us. Everybody from the riders to the crew chiefs to the mechanics, everybody's a little bit more on edge this weekend. The heat is the heat, but at the same point when you're spending 12 hours a day in 105 degree heat, it does kind of get to you at a certain point. So you kind of have to treat each other with kid gloves and try to have a lot more respect for each other and the jobs that we're all doing at this point just to kind of cut each other some slack but it definitely does make it a bit more difficult. We made some changes this morning, uh, try to make the bike a little bit less physical and try to get the bike to hold the line a little bit better so PJ doesn't have to be as aggressive with the bike earlier to see if that will make both him and the bike a little bit stronger towards the end of the race is the idea. So, but yeah, didn't quite end up with the result we wanted, but we were still pretty close to the front and still felt pretty competitive about our weekend. So we were pretty happy with our bike. Um, we were pretty consistent with lap times throughout the whole race. We just didn't quite get the results we wanted in the last race. It's hot for sure. I mean, I just kind of sit in, in a cold plunge 
a little bit longer before the race. So when I'm, by the time I made it to the grid, I'm still a little cold, not sweating yet, uh, which I think just helps delay the heat a little bit. And then, um, yeah, I just got out of the cold plunge again. So I'm still like shivering a little bit. <laughs> We only have two wins this year, but they're both really special. And and uh, to to beat Jake on a on a day like today, when when fitness really came into play, was um, yeah, it was big for me. And these guys asked me before the race, you know, what is it about Jake that makes him so good? And I, I thought about that a lot during the race, maybe you know, I think and and uh, maybe use it as a little bit of motivation. I was like, man, I don't want people thinking that. I don't want people thinking that we think that he's so good. You know, I, he's. He is a great racer, but we're all just as good as him, and we can beat him. And and uh, I think sometimes you just kind of fall into these ruts, and maybe it takes something like that, you know. And uh, maybe I needed somebody to say something like that to wake me up a little bit. So, Bobby Fong finishing just off the podium in fourth shows the lack of laps and qualifying can be costly. I was pretty confident I could be up front, but I qualified so far back, I had to work my way through the pack a little bit, and. Um, we were doing low mid tens, which was what got me, you know, second through third. Um, so my pace was pretty good by the end. It when warm tires, we seem to be pretty good on the bike. So I just gotta find that uh, that balance, you know, with uh, trying to get that extra edge with a new tire in the beginning of the race. Sometimes it takes knocks to learn all that. And Bobby's had his knocks, you know. I mean, he was super sport champion and then kind of didn't find himself without anything and. I think he's one of the true stars in this paddock. He always has been, but I, I think he's just getting better and better. After the break, a few riders reflect on the season with a last round only 11 days away. The point standings with two races left has Jacobson needing Heron to have some bad luck to overtake him for second. Escalante will make a push to jump two spots as Skoltz hopes to hold him off to finish fourth in the championship. It's kind of been really difficult with Josh, to be honest, because, you know, I'll beat him in uh, one race and then he'll beat me in, a, in another race or, you know, he'll get a DNF like he got in the first race. The points just keep staying the same and <laughs> I can't uh, grab an advantage. And then I don't think that like he gets an advantage again. So it's like kind of been just floating in the same same points. I'm ready to fight for, for the top three every race weekend, you know? Yeah, I think now my team and me, the, the package is really good. With one round left on the season, teams and riders start to look back on the year as a whole. We went into Laguna after, after the ridge and I felt like we were kind of on a, on a steady upward uh, trajectory uh, throughout the season till that point. But then uh, Laguna, I had a, um, my back flared up, which I've had like two pretty big back surgeries already. Thankfully, I got checked out and it wasn't, wasn't anything major. It was just, uh, just tweaked it a little bit or something. But from there on out, Brainerd was really tough for us. And then from there, kind of destroying two bikes in one weekend, kind of put our parts into reserve a little bit. And we were, the guys were having to scrounge some stuff to put bikes together for me. And we've just been having a lot of little stupid issues, really. So I haven't had a good weekend more or less since the ridge, it feels like. In 2022, Richie Escalante finished 17.5 seconds behind the leader in fourth place at Laguna Seca in both races. In 2023, he finished 10.8 seconds, 6.8 seconds, and 2.75 seconds in fourth place in all three races. And you look at the, at the front, the front's so condensed. You finished 18 seconds off, off the leader you're, you're ninth. These guys, you have to be on it. That's, that's the progress of everyone pushing, new manufacturers coming in. It's the progress of everybody wants to win. It's, it's the pressure we have and you, you, you truly crunch the numbers. And, and when you see the numbers in front of you and go, wow, that's progress. I mean, at Coda 2022, Richie's first Superbike race, I think he was 40 seconds behind the leader two seconds, it's wow. nothing. The paddock's excitement for Cameron Bobier's return was cut short after his decision to sit out the season. I think we were all looking forward to this, this championship coming down to the, to the wire and uh, we kind of got robbed a little bit as, as fans, I feel like, of that. And uh, I think Cam would have been there, but at the same time, I think Jake 
would have maybe had the upper hand because he's going to a lot of these tracks on the same bike, the same crew where, you know, Cam's coming in and kind of starting from scratch at a lot of these tracks. So I think he could have, I think would have boded well for next year, you know, where he comes to these tracks and has a starting point. But uh, that's the thing with racing, you just never know. You can sit here and say that, you know, if Cameron was there, it would go down to the race, the last race in New Jersey. But uh, you never know, and that, that's why it's racing, and that's what makes it so exciting. A look ahead to the last round at New Jersey Motorsports Park, next. I think getting a podium and stuff was, was really good today in the extreme conditions that we had. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to uh, New Jersey, which is my, like, uh, home track, so it, it's good to be on the podium and then go, go straight into Jersey where uh, I'm re really ready to uh, make a statement in my home, uh, my home race this year. The last weekend of the season has a tropical storm looming off the New Jersey shore. It looks like both race days will be wet, but what's looming in many riders' minds is, do I have a ride for next year? I think for Ducati, you know, Josh has had a great year and he has stepped up a lot. He, you know, rode America in the race two that he won at Coda. He is super talented. I think another thing for him when he went back to Coda to a track that they tested at, you've seen how strong he was. And I think that the Ducati is so much different for him. That team has had a new rider every year. So if they can go same rider next year, you know, same team, Josh on the Ducati again, show up, have a little bit of uh, data from the year before, I think Josh can be a lot stronger. We've seen this year, day three, race two, wins, podiums, fighting for wins. So go next year, he starts Friday morning with that setup. I'll be back with the Westby boys, and I, I'm back at it for, oof, must be my seventh, eighth year now, you know, so I'm just looking forward to coming back in 24, having a more consistent year and be battling for, for the podium. My Roland Sands SDI crew has been doing good on the bagger and I can't complain. We're running up front with the factory boys and so I'm, I'm having fun over there and it's a good group of guys. And then on the Superbike, I'm having fun as well. So I know uh, it's been talks about both teams want to continue next year. So yeah, I'm gonna keep an open mind and you know, but like I said, if I end up where I'm at this year, I'll be super stoked. Yeah, in a perfect world, if you end up with a full-time... Full Me. Sorry. In the past, we've always kind of just done one-year deals and waited on some other stuff to happen, but we got options on Escalante through 2026 and we got options on Posh through 2026. So we're gonna, we're gonna see them all at the front. As a fill-in rider, Stefano Mesa already knows Cameron Bobier will get his bike back next season, and a super bike ride for Mesa is unlikely. I'm not sure what I'm doing next year at the moment. Uh, honestly, I, as long as I'm racing, I'm happy, you know, but uh, obviously I want to ride a super bike again, but uh, super grateful I got this opportunity for the last two rounds. Hopefully I, I showed what, I, what I'm capable of a little bit, you know. Uh, in a super bike, it definitely takes time to learn, you know. We've seen it with everybody that goes from, from a little bike or even from a stock bike to a super bike. It takes, it takes some, some process and some, some learning. So uh, at the moment, we're not sure what we're doing. Uh, we'll see what goes happening and uh, hopefully we'll be around next year. Brandon Posh hasn't had a breakthrough race in his short rookie season, but that doesn't show a lack of confidence. I'm hoping to come back next year and do a uh, full superbike and then do Daytona and Loudoun, if everything goes well, if I stop riding around in eighth place. You get a third <laughs> yeah, get the third Roly, make 55 grand at Loudoun, and uh, destroy these guys in superbike. No, I want to be a front runner. I'm tired of running around in fifth and sixth. On the season finale of Pressure to Rise. I don't know what to do. What is the penalty if he doesn't? It's like 96 down turn 12, rider is up. So I was just ecstatic with fourth. I didn't know I had a podium to like hold in here into the pits. Good one, huh? What a way to finish the season. Right now we can win this and we're done if we do this. I think we're f 